So if you haven't been watching my videos and you don't know, my partner and I are working on projects involving solid and liquid helium. And in this video, I am going to show you our first experiment with liquid helium. Basically, it consisted of sticking a resonator in the liquid helium and using the location of resonances to find the speed of sound. We wanted to find the speed of sound around the lambda point transition from a pure normal fluid, which is type 1 helium, to type 2 helium, which has that superfluid character. In this video, I actually show you the experiment itself. I show you the liquid helium itself, I show you the superfluid helium, and I tried very hard to film the transition across the lambda point, and I sort of did. It's actually not bad, but it's not great either. What happened was my camera was focusing on the boiling at the surface of the helium, and so when it went across the transition, actually when it even just got really close and the boiling started to subside, my camera lost focus because what it was focusing on before was no longer there. So it got blurry right over the transition, unfortunately. But you can still kind of see what's going on. You can certainly see what's going on right up to the transition and then right afterwards. And I get good superfluid helium footage afterwards. So here's all the footage of our experiment. Time to do the transfer. Purging the transfer tube. And it'll blow it'll blow out here as we put the transfer tube into the helium. Mm -hmm. So you have to the, the, the idea is to try to keep this thing as uh, upright and aligned at the upper bar level as normal as possible. Mm -hmm. And it's convenient then to come down and you get the feel here, the feel here made to about this point. And I think this fits, I'm not quite sure how far we can do that in the music. Now, after the big boy stuff, typically what I do is just try to close this valve capture some of the boil off gas and then use that to start the transfer. And that clip is just to keep keep it from going all the way down so that it's the end of the tube doesn't, I'm not sure what it runs into. Mm -hmm. But this should be fine. There, there is this little, little prop that I do sometimes uh, in place of the clip, maybe a little bit now. You can hear it through the sun gas is coming over. Now that that's blow, blown what it needs to blow, we can. And the and fill is going. The gas pressure is pushing the liquid over through that vacuum jacket transfer again. tube. Dangling heater. All the foil coated resonator. Thermometer. Is it still going up? I'll give it more gas if it isn't. Oh my, that liquid helium line is hard to see. Yeah, it looks like it's still going up some. Oh, yep, there's the liquid helium line. Wow. <laughs> I can see it quite well. I'm using my phone screen to magnify the area. Oh, good. And so now I can really see it. Wow, look at that. There's the liquid helium right in the middle there. Oh, yeah. It's filling. Can you see in the phone screen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cute. That's awesome. Wow, yeah. way easier to see. Now, where is the level? Oh, just at the top of your screen there? Well, right here, right in the middle. See that line? I'll zoom in. You see that? Yep, yep, oh, nice. That's the liquid helium line. <laughs> That's really cute. Oh, my. Okay. Let's Oh, it's filling faster now. Okay. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I can pull back a little bit. That's neat. That is really neat. 
can see the nitrogen bubbles going by. Yeah, you know, it's a destruction, isn't it, to have the nitrogen there? Though you can definitely see the helium. It's pretty fun. That is pretty neat. It's almost the liquid nitrogen level. Oh yeah, I, I keep forgetting that you were moving that phone in. Right, yeah. Yep, okay, it's at the liquid nitrogen level. Now it's past the nitrogen level. Okay. Look at that. You might as well push it up pretty high. Yeah. Tell me when it's getting just about to the limit of what we can see. I think it's there. Okay. This is where it will Yeah. Here, yeah. let me just, just close that valve. Yeah. I can still see the helium bubbles going all the way up there. We're doing our first test in normal liquid helium with the resonator. We're getting a noisy signal. This is just at the helium boiling point. So 4.2 Kelvin. It's really early in the test though, so we don't know exactly what it is that we're actually gonna see. We're not getting clear resonances, and we suspect that is because there's a bubble of helium in the resonator, and so we're gonna go below the lambda point where it'll become a superfluid and the bubble would therefore go away. Then after that, we're gonna do some resonator tests at superfluid temperatures, and we're gonna come back up and do the resonator tests above the lambda point again. This graph here shows the speed of first sound as a function of temperature, and you see there's that weird dip down there right at the lambda point. That's the primary anomaly we're looking for. Somebody asked me in the comments. Okay, so there's the helium level there. It's boiled down to the point where you can see it again. Now we're going to start pumping it down. It'll boil vigorously. And then once we reach the lambda point, it'll stop boiling altogether because it'll be a superfluid. You can't see because I'm really zoomed in, but the helium level has fallen a lot because we've been pumping it down. And it's actually fallen below the nitrogen level. And uh, you can see it's boiling vigorously, and this will continue for a while until... Now the helium you can see is in the middle of the screen there, I'm trying to focus. But this is difficult filming. Nitrogen bubbles go by every now and then, but at vigorous boiling with the small bubbles in front of that metal cryostat stem is the helium. I'm having to shine a light in there with the flashlight to get the filming done, so it's a bit of an awkward thing to do. I'm going to try and film the transition to the lambda point. Okay, this is going to be a challenge. Got to pump out about a third of the helium that's there before we get down to that transition. Okay. Evaporative cooling, if you're wondering how it's getting colder, when we pump, just look up evaporative cooling. Ooh. Okay, we're near, we're near the lambda point pressure-wise. And it's still boiling a little bit. It'll stop boiling when it gets there. And it has stopped boiling, I think. Well, no, no, it's still going. No longer focusing, it stopped boiling. Yeah, it used to be boiling and the camera was focusing on that. Oh wait, you can see the helium level and it's definitely not boiling. Yeah, it's a superfluid. And right as it made the transition to the superfluid, it got really hard to focus the camera because the boiling was no longer there and it didn't know what to focus on. It couldn't see anything. But you can see that little line there right on that streak. 
That is where the superfluid helium starts and where the vapor stops. Okay, you see that line right there in the middle of the screen? That's where it is. That's the superfluid helium you're seeing below that line. Not very interesting. Just a really still clear liquid. But yep, definitely type 2 superfluid helium 4. And we did have to boil down about a third of it. Nitrogen top up. You can see very clearly the helium line. Got a better filming angle. You can see the superfluid better. Got another this one, resonance. when it dropped out, what a beautiful resonance. The Y, when it's dropping here, that Y was coming up. Oh, there's that close 70 to zero as was X. Kilohertz resonance. Beautiful. There's the when we started, I had it set at a pretty well, wide range, so I think it just looked like this tiny little dot. Roughly when 81 I, kilohertz. So this is the complete spectrum from our successful first sound test in superfluid helium. Each of those peaks you see is a resonance and they occur at roughly multiples of 9.05. You saw the last ones coming in in the clips that I just showed you. It was very exciting. Those peaks are beautiful. And those are the resonance loops. So that's an XY plot and it's giving us those nice circles. So it really worked. We'll be able to determine the speed of sound from this. We're doing another wider range test that's also proving successful. So yeah, you can identify and watch form very clearly the resonances by looking at the loops as they form in the XY plot. And that happens because at resonance everything's in phase and when you're as far out of resonance as possible everything's out of phase. So you get those nice loops. There, another one formed. That was the one at 45. We just got the resonance at 54k hertz. I'm excited to see the 63 one form. Probably be more at 64 kilohertz because those multiples of 0.055 add up. Let's see that loop form. Oh, oh there, there it is. Ha ha ha. What a wonderful thing. I think we're near the 72 kilohertz one. There, there it goes. Look at that loop form. This is a complete gorgeous spectrum we just got. We've got resonances from about 9,000 all the way to 100,000 hertz. And that is the final XY diagram with all those resonance loops. Each one of those small loops is a resonance loop. There are a bunch of them, each one of the medium ones, and of course that large one is also a resonance loop. Each one of those peaks there corresponds to a resonance and one of these resonance loops on the XY plot. Where, of course, the XY, if you didn't know, refers to the in-phase and out-of-phase outputs of a two-phase lock-in amplifier. Yep. There it is. There's the superfluid helium. It's actually not too bad of a shot. and that oscillating liquid behind the nitrogen bubbles. Okay, so since we figured out that problem that we were having before that was making our data complete trash, we have come back up to the boiling point of helium and we're trying to take data there again and we're getting beautiful resonances. So getting whatever bubble out, or whatever it was in there, and sorting out the noise sources in our equipment by trying those lower temperature runs in the superfluid regime, it, it worked. We got great data down there, and now we're up here again getting great data. Okay, so you've seen the liquid helium, you've seen the superfluid helium, and you've even seen roughly what it looks like when it goes across that transition. I filmed to the best of my ability there, but it was tricky. And you've seen the resonances that we saw when we turned on the resonator at various different conditions. Total, we got data in three positions below the lambda point, and then at the boiling point, 
above the lambda point. Now we weren't able to get between the lambda point and the boiling point because it's really hard to regulate the bath temperature. It's really hard to keep that under control. So our experiment isn't perfectly ideal, but still should reveal some interesting things. I hope you enjoyed this liquid helium riddled video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the liquid helium. I hope you enjoyed seeing the superfluid helium. I hope the video of the transition was clear enough for you to at least make something interesting out. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.